the Augusta National, home of the Masters. For 50 years, it's been the golf world's greatest stage. It's where Bobby Jones started the tournament as a gathering of friends. And Gene Sarazen turned it to high drama with the double eagle of 1935. It's where a pair of Texans held a shootout and Nelson beat Hogan by a stroke. And where yet another Texan put his own brand on the Masters, Jimmy Demerit, the first three-time winner. It's where Sam Snead dominated in the early 50s, before a kid from Pennsylvania took the reins. And Arnold Palmer was the first to win four times. It's where Jack Nicklaus won back-to-back -back titles and a record fifth on a storied cut in 1975. Since then, it's a tournament that has featured the sure touch of Tom Watson. Got a chance. Tom Watson. And the raw power of Seve Ballesteros, two-time champion and a leader again this year. It's where we've seen and shared the joy of Ben Crenshaw. And last year's heartbreak of Curtis Strange. He found the water on the second nine's par five. And so gave way to the closing charge of West Germany's Bernhard Langer. The Augusta National, golf's greatest stage. The Masters, a tradition unlike any other. The tournament began Thursday morning. One of the honorary starters, Gene Sarazen, watch his feet. Same move back in 1935. Playing alongside Gene Thursday morning as one of the starters, Sam Snead, the three-time Masters champion. He's now 75, but he's still got that graceful swing. As much as anything, the wind really dominated the first round here at Augusta. But Bill Kratzer from Fort Wayne, Indiana, had a steady hand on that Thursday. Shot 468 and shared the first round lead with Ken Green, who demonstrated a putting touch like this. But then it was round two, and the golfer everyone feared, Seve Ballesteros, made a move on the leaderboard. Then it was round three yesterday. This story belonged to Nick Price after a first hole bogey, 10 birdies, and almost an 11th at 18. But he still wound up with the first record, 63. But the man who moved to the top of the leaderboard was Greg yeah. That birdie putt at 17, and Seve Ballesteros went bogey, bogey. And there you see that Bernhard Longer, last year's Masters champion, has moved into a tie with Norman. Longer birdied number two. Norman has been a magician just to stay at six under par so far on the front nine. And how about Jay Hawes? He started the day even par, and he went five under through the first eight. And now, of course, he is trying to battle his way through Amen Corner and make that home stretch run where he will have the clubhouse lead if he can keep his game together. Also within striking distance, Bob Tway, Donnie Hammond are there, and Tom Watson has lost a shot, and he is now three under par through seven holes here on the final round at Augusta. The weather conditions today, absolutely gorgeous. If you could just describe the day that you wanted to play golf, you would pick this one. It's warm, 85 degrees, Look at very little wind to bother these players when they come through that treacherous amen corner at 11, 12, and 13. Now let's go out and meet the gentlemen who are going to be describing the action for you here this afternoon at Augusta. Let's start at the 10th hole. I'm Bob Murphy. I'll be at the 10th hole, a 485-yard par 4. You can see that the difficulty of this hole is playing over par, 4.2. The pin today is in the back left. And the danger, of course, will be hitting the ball over the green or to the left, leaving a very difficult chip shot. I'm Steve Melnick, and I'll be at the 11th hole, a 455-yard par 4. Degree of difficulty this week, 4.17. Today's pin placement cut near the small pond brings it very much into play. And I'll be at the 12th hole, a 162-yard par 3. Through three days, the degree of difficulty, 3.16. Today's pin placement in the back right brings that water very much into play as well. 
I'm Ken Venturi and I'll be at the 13th hole of 465 yard par five. Four bunkers behind the green, but a creek protects the front of the green and the right side. Don't let the score in here fool you. They've had eight eagles. It's a beautiful hole, requires talent and experience. Today, the pin is in the right side of the green. It'll take its toll today, but undoubtedly, it's the most beautiful hole at Augusta. I'm Gary McCord. I'll be on the 14th hole. Par four, dog leg to the left, slightly uphill. This hole is characterized by the most severe green on the golf course. It has a huge ridge that runs the width of this green. The pin placement today will be virtually inaccessible. I'm Ben Wright. I'll be reporting the play from the 15th hole, a 500 yard straightaway par five, where a big drive is required to the top of the hill if the player is to attempt a big carry over a pond in front of the shallow green. I'm Jim Nance. I'll be at the 16th hole, 182 yards, par three. Golfers will hit middle irons to a menacing green, which will slope toward the water, and today's pin placement on the back left will favor the golfer who can bring it in from right to left. I'm Vern Lundquist. I'll be at the 17th hole, a straight uphill par four measuring 400 yards. The pin today is cut back right, which takes the front bunker out of play, but leaves real problems for those going over the green. And I'm Pat Summerall. I'll be at 18, a 405 yard par four. The finishing hole has trees on the right, bunkers on the left, a very narrow landing area. Whoever emerges as the champion when he makes the walk up that hill will experience one of the great moments in sport. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger down in the Butler Cabin, where about three hours from now, of course, the Green Jacket, the most prestigious prize in all of golf, will be awarded to the 1986 Masters champion. What a scramble. This could be a day we wind up with a playoff, and if they do, the golfers will immediately, Tom Weiskopf, go over to the 10th tee and put it up there. Now, let me ask you, what does it take to win here today? What do you have to have? Well, Augusta is unlike any of the other majors, Brent. There is no rough here. It has wide fairways, but you need strategy off the tee because it is really a second shot golf course, meaning that you must put the ball in a position on the green to keep away from three putting all the time, putting pressure on your short game. It also favors the power player, the high ball hitter with a lot of spin to keep the ball up on those ledges, and they have to putt well here, and all of these players do just that. Now, let's go out to the sixth hole here on the front nine. Six is a par three, measuring today at 192 yards. Elevated tee perhaps 30 feet above the green, and the pin is cut back left some 24 yards from the front, so that bunker really shouldn't come into play, but the danger is keeping it left and kicking it off uh, the green to the left. Bernhard Lunger at six under par. Perhaps the most difficult task in golf to repeat as the Masters champion. It's only been done once, and he is the defending champion, of course. There's a large knoll on the right side of the green. You want to stay away from that. And Longer has left himself quite some distance. Now his fellow competitor Donnie Hammond told you all yesterday he was a gallery guard here back when he was a teenager primarily at the 13th hole and what a thrill it must be for him to play in his first Masters and to be in contention on the final day Hammond currently at minus three he just bogeyed the fifth hole three under having uh, lost two shots to par today. We are told now Bernhard Longer did not reach the green. Tom Weisskopf, this is a real task here, isn't it? Club selection. It is, Vern, because you're playing so much downhill. There's a change of elevation, maybe close to 30 or 40 feet. And that pin is protected by that huge bunker. And what Donnie's concerned about, I'm sure, is to, to take the right club and hit it hard. Don't hit it easy. Hit it hard here. He took a rip at it. Excellent shot. Let's go back to the fifth hole. The fifth hole is a 435 yard par four. Greg Norman for birdie. Norman's even par through the first four holes, but it's been anything but easy. Up and down at one, up and down in two for par. 
great save for par at four where his tee shot went through the green. Typical final round pressures of a major championship. Wind beginning to pick up now. Early in the day it was dead calm to now. You see that breeze freshening, that flagstick moving in the wind. Now this is Nick Price. Another one of those contingent of foreigners that we've talked about. Originally from Zimbabwe, we have a Spaniard, a German, an Australian. We've got Gary Player joining us. Gary, is it, do you like seeing these foreigners taking part here? Well, Steve, I don't know. I don't believe in the word foreigners. I think we all just golfers playing all around the world. Tell us about Nick Price. I think that Nick Price really is uh, what I'd call a very humble man and a, an outstanding gentleman. Uh, I think everybody likes Nick and he's a very, very talented man and I think he's going to do very well in the future. Well, he cer certainly credits you with his presence on our tour. I think you initially brought him to this country or had something to do with it. Well, I think it's his, uh, his own talent that has done it, uh, Steve. Price with a bogey at three came back with a fine birdie at the long par three fourth hole. He has some work left for par here. Nick Price on rounds of 79, 69, 63. Incredible 10 birdie third round. New course record here at Augusta National. While we wait, let's go to 13. In just the right time to watch Jay Haas go for birdie to go to six under for the day and the tournament. And just leaves it on the top lip. Let's go back to five. With that par, Price remains at five under, just as he started the day. This may be the easiest par Greg Norman's had thus far. Par it is that Norman remains at six under. Let's go to six. Bernhard Lunger. Putt will have a considerable break from right to left. Moments ago, Steve Melnick talked with Bernhard Longer and asked him if it would be easier to win today than as the defending champion. It's not going to make it a lot easier, but uh, it might help a little bit because I've been in a similar situation last year and I won, so maybe I can do the same thing this year. So, safely in, let's go to Brent Musburger. All right, Vern, let's take a look at some action earlier, Tom. This was Seve Ballesteros on the first hole. A perfect drive to the center of the fairway. He probably played a short iron here to the back left pin placement. And it was an excellent shot, Brent. Some 15 feet short of the hole. He just missed the birdie putt, stayed one shot behind Greg Norman at the moment. And then it was Bernhard Longer's second shot. Again, a perfect drive, but pulled his second shot to a very tough position to get the ball up and down from. And he was able to do it, saved par right there. And the man who has had to save par throughout this opening round has been Greg Norman. Well, after a poor tee shot in the right woods, I'm sure nerves have something to do with that starting. He played a miraculous little chip and run right here because that is a very difficult shot that he played, and he put it up to within three and a half feet. So he saved par on the first hole, and then on the second hole in the twosome just in front of him, it was longer for the birdie. Yes, this is from about six feet. 
Good putt, good solid putt, Brent. Became one of the co-leaders. Back on two, it was Norman for the par. Well, he played his third shot from the bunker and scalded over the green and had a very difficult fourth shot, which has to be played downhill through a little swale, and he, and he saved par again. Longer for par on the third hole. Bernard uh, has been playing very, very well, and again, leaves himself in a good position, you know, to make par. Greg Norman finally had an easy hole. Just missing the birdie there on three, but he makes his par. You know, Tom, there's a player we have overlooked a little bit here by the name of Tom Kite. And this is at the fourth hole, a long, I'm sorry, that's Bernard Langer at the fourth hole. This is a long 220-yard downhill par three. Very difficult hole, and he played a very good shot right there. today. None more so than Greg Norman. This a par three fourth hole. It's probably a two or three iron and Greg went over the top of this shot, pulled it, hit it through the green and put himself again in a very, very difficult position to save par. Here is Nick Price. Well, if you're going to hit a long iron and hit it well, this is the perfect example of how it should look. Now, Tom, let's show everyone Norman the Magician. Well, he's over there on the next tee almost, the fifth tee, Brent, so he has to chip the ball up through a swale, and then the ball goes downhill to the pin, past the pin, to within three and a half, four feet again. Believe me, that was a marvelous golf shot. Price had lost a shot. This was for the birdie really a much needed birdie. It gives you a lot of confidence to come back after a bogey with a birdie, especially on hole number four, Brent. Tom, let me ask you, when you save par here again, what's the feeling? It can't get any worse, it's my tournament now, or do you get a little jittery and say, what's gonna befall me in the holes ahead? Well, I can, this is number six, uh, Nick Price again, probably a six iron, pins in the back part of the green. Good golf swing right there we're watching. He pulled his shot. We'll... Let's go out to the hole now, Tom. Well, that is the problem we talked about uh, when we came on the air. That pin placed only 15 feet from the left edge. Saw John Mahaffey this morning have problems getting it up and down from just about that same spot. Now Greg Norman. And what a wonderfully scrambling first five holes he's had. This again is at par three, 192 yards today, and the pin cut back left side. Tom, is, is that the most difficult pin placement on this screen? I wouldn't say so. They're all difficult out there. Really, the top right pin placement is the most difficult. If Greg plays a right to left shot and uses the bank to the right of the hole, he has a chance of getting this ball very close to the hole if it's hit properly. It was. 12 to 15 feet away from birdie at six. Now we're back live and this is Nick Price from the left hand side. Now, Tommy will he try and play a little bump and run shot here. Well, Vern, I think this, this is the wonderful thing about Augusta and a very confusing characteristic because he has so many options. He can putt the ball, he can play a chip and run, or he can pitch it. I would say he'll probably play a chip and run. No, you see, that's the confusing thing. He knows he has three ways to play this shot. Gary, what do you think? Well, I think it depends on how you're feeling at the moment, Brent. Sometimes you feel confident with a little lofted shot, and other times you feel confident with a bump shot. And that does vary from day to day, just like your feel varies from day to day. Nick Price, second shot. Well, he made the right decision.
That'll be a tap in for Nick Price's par three. Not a tap in. He'll mark the ball, but uh, that was really a well executed shot. And Greg Norman, our co-leader. These greens have uh, have slowed down a little bit from the first two days, but uh, they can still be treacherous. Early this morning, Ken Green, who was a first round co-leader, four putted this sixth green. And a three putt from three and a half feet. Norman with rounds of 70, 72, and 68. Fern? Yes, Tom. This putt appears to be flat. Uh, believe me, it is not flat. It is downhill, it is very fast, and it'll break left to right. Good opportunity, though. And this would put him back into sole possession of the lead, a position from which he started the day about an hour and 22 minutes ago. First birdie of the afternoon, and Greg Norman is back in sole possession of the lead in the final round of the 1986 Masters. Greg Norman's first birdie has put him at seven under par. Ballesteros and Longer are just a stroke back, followed by Haas, Kite, and Nick Price. Well, here at Augusta for the final round, it's kind of like us against the world, if you will. Sandy Lyle of Scotland is paired with Jack Nicholas, the five-time winner. Tommy Nakajima of Japan, he went out with Tom Watson. Seve Ballesteros of Spain paired with Tom Kite. Donnie Hammond against the defending champion from West Germany, Bernhard Langer. And, of course, Nick Price of South Africa and against Greg Norman, the Australian. And let's go quickly out to nine. That's Greg Norman with uh, a long iron at this, the equal shortest power four on the course at 360 yards, known as Pampas for the grass that is growing in clumps behind the tee, and now Nick Price. Most of the players go with uh, fairway woods and long irons here. That was a very aggressive swing and a splendid result. It's a very narrow little par four with five bunkers encircling the green as we go to the ninth. Here we have Jay Haas. This is a par putt of about 15 feet. He's left it short. Jay drops a stroke here now to go to four under par, and he's got to make some birdies real quick to try to get up towards the top of that leaderboard with just a few holes remaining. The problem we're going to have here on 14 today is the pin is cut right against this ridge, and any ball that's left short of that ridge, it's going to be very, very, very hard to get up and down. We have Seve Ballesteros, top of the leaderboard, at eight under par, followed by Greg Norman, Bernhard Langer, Tom Kite, and Nick Price. Well, back at the final round of the Masters, let's reset the stage. Seve Ballesteros and Tom Kite 
both scored eagles on the eighth hole. Now that moved by Asteros to the top of the tournament at eight under par, eight under par with Kite moving into contention at five under. Gary Player, let me quickly follow up that question about us against the world, if you will. Why are the foreign players so much better today? What has happened to the game of golf? Well, I think there's a great incentive now, and uh, people have learned a lot about organizing, like from the masters here all over the world. But let me just say one thing, that when Bobby Jones was here, he always said one of his greatest wishes was to see more international players, the same as the sponsors and the American public want to see their players line up against the best. I was amazed to see in the paper the other day, one man said it makes his blood boil to see all these foreigners doing well. He's not thinking very big. No, the Olympics uh, bring out some of the best in athletic competition, and if we get something like this going, I would think it would be great for golf. I think the tour really needs that. Gary, you, of course, were the first foreign player to win here. What does it take today as we go back out to the course to win the green jacket? <laughs> You've got to have everything going right, and I'm just choking just watching it here, really. <laughs> this is marvelous. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much. Let's go out to the seventh hole. And Greg Norman waiting for what is happening on the green, which uh, involves Bernhard Langer, who is six under par, and Donnie Hammond, who is three under par. And that was a fourth shot of Bernhard Langer, who is obviously tangled with the trees that uh, close in on you on both sides of this very short but deadly little par four. So Langer in all kinds of trouble. Donny Hammond, who started the day at five under par, made uh, a bogey at the first hole. He birded the second, but he bogeyed the third. And there's uh, uh, Seve Ballesteros, who is uh, in trouble at the ninth hole, and that's where we'll go. Up at the green, Tom Watson. his birdie putt and from where he was to stop it coming down that hill about the only place to stop it is in the hole earlier today we talked with Tom Watson about Augusta Experience is, uh, I think, a, is a big factor because uh, I've been there before. Uh, there have been several players that have been there before. Bernard Langer, uh, Ballesteros, Jack Nicklaus. Uh, I'm sure I've missed somebody who's been there. In the, uh, going down the last nine holes, uh, you have to have that experience to know, judge what the wind's going to do, and uh, pretty much know what it's going to take to win and do it. That was Nakajima, and that was his par. We go back to seven. And Bernhard Langer putting and making his bogey and dropping him back to five under par just as he started. His only birdie the second hole today. And this narrow little par four claims another victim as we look back to Greg Norman at seven under par, alone in second place behind his friend and rival, Sevi Ballesteros. It's only a nine iron at most. But it's a shallow little green and it is virtually surrounded by five bunkers. Well, uh, if that spins back enough, that's going to give him uh, still a very testing putt with a big right to left swing. Now, Nicky Price, who really played a very aggressive tee shot here, he's at five under par just as he started, with a bogey at the third hole and that magnificent uh, long iron shot at the fourth for a birdie.
The hole is cut just four yards from the left-hand edge of the green, and that is the kind of thing that can happen when it is placed there. He's going to have a desperate downhill slider left to right from there. And we'll go over to the 10th. That's Gary Koch, putting for par. Gary today is two over par, so he needs a few birdies on the back nine. He said he just hadn't been putting well this week, and you're not going to do very well if you don't putt at Augusta. No question about that. And we'll go to 15. This was Jay Haas with a three wood just a few moments ago. And a wonderful looking shot that is. That's right at it. And Jay Haas has a great opportunity for a birdie here and could set a target now to the ninth. Piesteros in trouble, along with Kite Kite not in trouble. But that's his playing partner, Piesteros, is with difficulty. Back to the studio and Brent Musburger. All right, Pat, thank you. And uh, Gary Player has to catch a plane and, uh, and get back, uh, return to his home. Gary, would you like to tell us uh, who you think might win this Masters? Would you like to pick a champion for us? Well, I don't think you can ever win doing that, but if the best player wins, it'll be Ballesteros because he is definitely the best player in the world. There's no question about that. He's got strength and finesse of a locksmith. All right, thank you very much, Gary. Now let's go back out to the course. Well, there he is. And he's going to need to be a locksmith to get this close. Tom Weisskopf, what do you think Gary meant by that? By being a locksmith? Yes. Well, his touch is so fantastic. His ability with a short game is just that much better than anybody else. Not there, though, Pat. What he was protecting against Pat right there was the bunker that protected that pin from where he was. He's got some work cut out for him right now, though. Does he indeed? He needs another key. Back to 15. And now Ben Crenshaw with his second shot with a three wood from the best part of 240 yards. And another glorious golf shot comes in here at one under par for the day and the tournament. And as we go to the seventh hole, Nicky Price taps in for his par, having chipped quite elegantly from behind the green. And he will remain at five under par. Just three off the pace, but the pace uh, likely to slacken off a little since Ballesteros is having all his problems at the ninth hole. Let's have a look at his chip shot down this glass. Oh, it's a putt. Superb. Now Greg Norman with a really tricky putt. This green is traditionally very fast because uh, it is exposed to the wind, which is distinctly freshening this afternoon. And there you see how these uh, invaders have intruded in the last eight years. Ben, are you an invader? You could say that. We like you, Ben. Thank you. Oh, that's uh, way offline. Uh, that's uh, left himself an awful lot of hard work to do to stay at seven under par. And over to the ninth. And by Asteros. That's his fourth shot. <coughs> and 
And some work to do coming back for Seve. He has the outright lead at minus eight. And Norman at seven. And that could all change in a moment. Kytus five, Bernhard Langer, the defending champion is five, Nick Price is five, back to seven. And this really important putt for Greg Norman, of course they're all important today, but this to remain at seven under par. Little swing to the left. Nicely performed and so Greg Norman stays at seven under par as we go to the ninth. Kite. And Thomas left himself a chore to 15. Ben Crenshaw has this putt for an eagle. He knows it only too well. And it uh, will go, I think, a little to the left. This is a, an unfamiliar pin placement for the final day. An interesting one in that it uh, gets the players to go at this green. Well, he thinks it goes the other way, and he's right. And now he will have the at least four feet coming back for his birdie. Green's getting distinctly treacherous after yesterday when they were only single cut and they were distinctly slower than normal. And now Jay Haas, who has this great opportunity for an eagle three, and if he could get into the clubhouse at six, seven, maybe eight under par, he could really give all those players way out on the golf course a tremendous task to beat him. This one definitely does go left to right. Caught up in the fringe a little, it uh, didn't take off at all helpfully for him. And back to the ninth. By Steros. That's for five. <laughs> Tom Kite, Sebi's playing partner, by the way, made his par, so he stays at five. By Steros drops back to seven. We go to ten. Earlier, Jack Nicholas for birdie. To go four under par. And the bear, the bear is stalking. Come on, Jack, smile. That's it. We won't count him out on this back nine. How many times has he played it and next to nothing to win? Back in the fairway, Tommy Nakajima. Driven it in the right trees, actually. I'm sorry. What a shot that is. Left himself some seven or eight feet for birdie. So we'll go back to 15. And Ben Crenshaw. Oh, dear. Well, that uh, was virtually his last chance gone, so the 1984 champion will not repeat and he will remain at one under par as we go back to the eighth. Here we have Donnie Hammond. Probably got about uh, 60 yards, third shot. That pin is cut back in the left of this green, which actually is a dog leg to the left green. Donnie looked like he chunked that a little bit and he's got his work cut out for him here. He's got a good 50 footer up over this rise and into a green where the pin is slopes drastically from from right to left. The last group that just went through here, um, nothing really happened. Uh, Tom Kite hold a 100 yard wedge and then Seve hold a 125 yard wedge shot on top of him for two eagles. So we have at this time on our leaderboard, Seve Ballesteros, Greg Norman tied at seven under par, followed by Jay Haas. 
Seve Ballesteros and Greg Norman are tied atop our leaderboard in the final round of the Masters at seven under par and just two strokes back. You can see four golfers right there. And out at 16, that par three, here's Jim Nance. And Jay Haas on the tee. Backs away, many of the players struggling in club decision today, either five or six iron. Haas put on a similar charge last year in the final round, shooting a 67 and finishing fifth, only three shots behind Lager. Coming off the birdie at 15. How about that? Jay Haas already five under on today's round and only four feet away from moving within one shot of the lead. Let's go to nine. Here we have Donnie Hammond, his approach putt from 50 feet or more. He has left easily 12 feet short. You can see Donnie walking up that high ridge there in the middle of this green. And then from where he is right now to the cup is straight downhill. Here we have Bernhard Longer on his third shot. This was a little earlier. Mr. Green way to the right. And he is going to have a treacherous chip now. This ball will hit and release, and it's straight downhill now to the flag. Donnie Hammond live, 12 footer, save his par. Now he's got something left here to save his bogey. He will mark and let Bernhard look this one over. Donnie has lost three shots to par here so far and needs to get it back in the uh, birdie situations to get back in this golf tournament. This par five is 535 yards. Tee shot is uphill with a bunker off to the right hand side of the fairway with a carry of about 260 yards. Next shot is straight uphill blind to a plateaued fairway. Green surrounded by three huge mounds on the left hand side just to Bernhard's left right there. The green is about 70 feet deep and it swings straight away right to left. Bernhard's putting cross-handed so it must be outside of 15 feet there. He has hit a good three and a half feet by the hole. Let's go to 16. Shades of the old game show. Can you top this? Jay Haas had just put his tee shot within four feet of the cup here at 16. Then it was Ben Crenshaw's turn. The best of the day here at 16. To 10. Back in the fairway, Tom Kite with a four iron. Tom's five under, two shots behind the lead. Stop now, stop. Boy, that is an excellent shot. Tommy Nakajima earlier missed a seemingly relatively easy birdie putt from about eight feet, but they're just not easy. Back in the fairway, Seve, from approximately 175. And we heard that Bernhard Longer has bogeyed number eight. Seve with a six iron.
And he's just left it short, but uh, in approximately the same position that Jack Nicholas was in when he made that beautiful putt up the hill. And we'll go over to eight. On the tee. We're in the fairway here, second shot. Greg Norman. Greg looks like he's got a wooden club out, so he's going to have a whack at this green, looks like. That's from the green area, looking that back down towards Greg. He didn't waste any of that right there. That's all he's got. Tom Weisskopf. That ball is left of those large mounds you see right there, down in the pine trees. To say the least, he is in serious problems right here. And uh, we asked Greg Norman, uh, how is he playing these par fives? Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, if I can, like 15, for example, on still days like this, if I can get a four or five iron in my hand, it makes a big difference instead of hitting one or two irons under that uh, small target. Uh, so length is a big factor, especially on number two. Number eight, I got it on front edge yesterday. So, uh, yeah, it has a big bearing. And we're at 16. This is Crenshaw for birdie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he wishes he could have his back nine all over again from yesterday when he shot four over 40 and virtually shot him right out of the tournament. Jay Haas moments before missed a golden opportunity to move at six under that may come back to haunt Mr. Haas nevertheless an outstanding round going so far five under today and currently in a tie for third. Let's go to ten. Seve is summing up his putt here of some twenty eight feet maybe thirty feet. This hole has been the scene in the past two years of the Good news, bad news, if you will. The good news when Crenshaw made that fantastic 65-foot putt straight up the hill. And then last year, of course, when Curtis Strange three-putted this hole and more or less gave it away on the back nine. So this could be the turning point for Seve right here after bogey and nine, get back on the track. I notice how Seve holds the putter in his right hand and sort of swings it. He's just putting a little mindset in there, which gives him the touch for the putt. A quiet stroke, easy back and accelerate through. This putt will work from Seve's right to his left. And not a bad putt. So Seve remains at seven under and tied for the lead. <laughs> Seve said yesterday that he missed an awful lot of putts under 15 feet and he just was a little disappointed, but he was happy with his position. And we'll go back to eight. Here we have Nick Price hitting his third shot. Keep this shot to the right of the flag. Try to get it over that mound, and now the ball will roll slowly towards the flag. Let's go to 11. Nicholas to move five under. Is it enough? Is it enough? Yes! Three birdies in a row for Nicholas. Nine, 10, 11. Back to eight. 
And here we have Greg Norman. With an absolutely impossible shot. He did very, very good to get that ball in the green. Let's go back to 11. Sandy Lau for par out of the back bunker, but it's Jack Nicklaus, the man of the hour. It's been 11 years since he donned that fifth green jacket. stands as one in admiration to ten. Earlier, Tom Kite for birdie. I'm afraid Tom just never hit that putt. He taps in for his par, and he remains five under. So Sevy and Greg Norman are two shots out in front of Jay Haas and charging Jack Nicklaus. It's like the days of old here at Augusta when Jack Nicklaus moves to the, or the top of that leaderboard. You can tell by the sounds when someone like a Nicklaus or an Arnold Palmer makes a move. Out to eight. Here you see Greg Norman's birdie attempt rolling down towards the flag. And rolling and rolling. The more the shark hit his second shot, he will be very happy to get that five and get out of here. This green on your second shot, you just do not want to miss this green to the left. Anything to the right is very, very playable. Let's go to the 12th hole. 162 yards, probably a six iron. That's way left. I have a feeling Jack was probably trying to play the shot safely. He just pulled it from where he was aiming. He rarely aims at that pin in the back right portion. And I think that was just a matter of pulling it about five yards to the left. Nicholas birdied the 11th and the 12th yesterday. Son Jackie caddying for him this week. Current British Open champion Sandy Lyle. Sandy won under par in his round today. Three under and all. It's the hardest thing to do here. Sometimes it comes more a test of your nerves than it does a test of your skill. Lyle probably going with a seven iron. And he too going left. It's up on the bank and got a great bounce almost to the green surface. Not a very good shot by Sandy, but a good break. Nicholas only two back. Lurking, lurking, lurking. 2 8. Here we have Nick Price. His attempt for a birdie. Once again, the ball's fallen off to the left of the hole. Nick will remain at five under par. I believe he can handle that one. That was earlier. We'll go to nine. Woman. The wind has picked up considerably. The reaction's good. Everyone seems to be pleased, including Greg Norman, and that should be the case. That's a good drive. Perfect. A 
up on the green, the defending champion. That's par for him. And Langer goes to 10. In the meantime, back on the tee is Nick Price. Birdie 10 out of the last 15 holes yesterday. And you stop and think about that one. Over to 17. Jay Haas, just two strokes off the lead, second shot. It is on this par four. Haas about 20 feet away to go six under. Let's go to the 11th hole. Tom Watson now. Tom has dropped one shot to par today. He's now at three under. No birdies, only a bogey at the par three sixth hole. Bob Murphy, I know that Tom Watson has struggled with his game thus far. He is that, Steve. What I wanted to say was I couldn't help but notice uh, Nicholas seems to be much more comfortable and more crouched. I'll wait until Tom putts here. A little swing from his right. What I was saying, Steve, is, and you've watched Jack as, as much as I have, he seems to be more behind the ball with his hands higher. Seems to be working. Nicholas, tough shot. Long green from about 60 feet. This is not the strength of his game, and it continues to plague him. He's got about an eight footer for par. Watch Jack through the first three rounds hit the ball so well from tee to green and make virtually nothing once he got there. Now this is Sandy Lyle. And a fan shot by Sandy. Benign conditions yesterday allowed so many players to take advantage of Amen Corner. A lot of birdies at 11, even more so at 12. And not much wind today. Not in the sense that it's a real factor anyway. Back on 11, Tom Watson got his par. Jack going with that new larger bladed putter. It's an awkward looking thing to, to look at. Evidently it works though. Son Jackie being a big help reading the greens. A fine golfer in his own right. I think if the truth be known, Nicholas's vision is not as good as it used to be as we go forward to 17. Jay Haas for sole possession of third place. Nope. 31 in the front. Even par so far in the back. And he has to settle for par here on 17 and will remain at five under. Let's go to the ninth hole. A nine of par four, 435 yards in length. Nick Price. Now come back down the slope a bit. No, it hangs up. Back to 12. But that should move from the right. Move the other way. Seve Ballesteros at the top of the hill at 11. About a five iron. It's not the kind of shot you'd expect from Seve. He was about 180 yards, but a lot of green to work with. Perfect pin placement for the shape of his shot. A moment ago, Tom Kite. Kite now remember it five under par. Yeah. 
What a gorgeous shot that is. Back to nine. Greg Norman. That's a fine shot. Nobody really has been able to get that close. Norman, the co-leader, minus nine. He and Ballesteros, both at minus seven. If anything, uh, the wind has freshened a bit. And the scores might be more difficult as they go down the back stretch and around Amen Corner over to 15. Where the sartorially elegant Payne Stewart has this putt for a birdie. And that takes him to five under par. And he and Haas are going to get home early and uh, give those gentlemen on the golf course a lot to think about if they can keep up this pace. We hear that Payne Stewart has already missed two putts of inside two feet, so uh, he could have been measured for a jacket, maybe, uh, had those gone in. Still, he has a great shot at it. Over to the 10th. Back in the fairway, Bernhard Longer from approximately 160 yards. I would imagine this would be a seven iron. Bernhard is not done what he wanted to do and needed to do and that was go out and make a few birdies trying to play a nice high draw and he's left this quite a bit short and left and not an easy putt for birdie again and we'll go back to nine and the last two of the day Nick Price and Greg Norman this is Price Something left. We were talking earlier about that round he shot yesterday, and he broke the course record of, of 64 with his 63. He almost made 62. Ten out of the last 15 holes he birdied. Amazing. By Asteros and Norman at the minus seven, tied for the lead. Then Haas, Payne Stewart, and the rest of the board. Co-leader. With the watch on his right arm. Time to make some birdies. However, that's par. Two eleven. By Asteros, just on the front edge, trying to two putt for par. Well, he misread the speed in the sense that the slope took it to the left. Let's go to nine. Price. To stay at five under. That's five. Two eleven. And Tom Kite moves to within one of the lead. With that birdie move to six under. Tom Kite's record here at Augusta second to none. He has everything but a green jacket.
now the man who owns two green jackets in 1980 and 1983. This for par. This to remain tied with Greg Norman at seven under. Going right back up the hill. Got it. Ballesteros and Norman at seven under. Now Tom Kite lurking one shot back. Hassan Stewart at five under par. Nick Price on the tee. This beautiful par four, dog leg left. Down the hill, the ideal tee shots. A nice draw right to left. And someone certainly liked it. And well, they should, right in the heart of the fairway and long. Earlier, this was Greg Norman. He hits a bad shot. Crash. And hello, there it is. But I'm afraid he's left himself some 300 yards away. And we'll go back to 12. This is Watson for par. Watson remains three under. Struggling with his game. Let's go four to 18. Jay Haas. He had a five iron up onto the green. A great round for Jay Haas. And the applause now for Ben Crenshaw. Over to 12. T shot, Tom Kite. Put it just through the green. Kite came here in 1984, one shot out of the lead and put his tee shot in the water. It's no surprise that he took a safer route. Left, didn't even put the pin in play here. Probably a good break for Ballesteros in that Kite played first. He can get a reading on what club to play. So he's about a half club longer than Tom with his mid irons. He too playing left. Tom Weisskopf, I think more than anything, that's a sign of maturity for Ballesteros. You saw him give the thumbs up sign to his caddy. He never fired at the flag. Well, Steve, you cannot let your ego get in your way out there at 11 and 12. And he realizes the penalties are so severe. They're a patient type of hole. In other words, you have to play them conservatively. You always have to play the percentages at 11 and 12. Par is always a good score. Let's go back to 10. First, I must apologize. I was wrong about where Norman's ball kicked out. He's about 215 yards. I thought the ball was up the hill more than it is. So this is a fantastic break. He needs to keep the ball under the tree. You can see on his left there, the branches hang out over the fairway. He's selected a four iron. That might seem a long shot to many of us. However, standing on the downhill, he will shut the blade down some. So as a result, it'll be a very strong four iron shot. The pin is cut right in the center back of the green. He hit it hard and low, but afraid he's pulled it way left into the gallery. And it's gone over there. You might have gotten a 
another break here. He may have hit a spectator and stopped short of going way down the hill. But I'm afraid there's a pine tree right there that may come into play. You heard him say, I hit somebody, I hope. Not hard and hurt him, but just hit him and stop. We'll go to 13 first. Your first look up today at the 13th hole. Jack Nicholas with a perfect drive down the left-hand side close to the creek. He's 210 yards to the hole. He only needs 175 to carry the water. Absolutely perfect drive for the position of the pin today. At a level lie, one of the few you find on this fairway. Going to be just a little bit left, but it's right on target. Hits the middle of the green and checks up, leaves himself about 40 feet. How important that might have been or will be, thinking going back to making bogey at 12. But what a fantastic birdies at 9, 10, and 11. Only to bogey 12, but he's two putts away for birdie to go back to five under, and still, it's a lot of golf left. And let's go back to 12. Tom Kite from just over the back of the green. When you talk about the strength of this man's game, you're looking at it right now. Let's go back to 10. In the fairway with an eight iron. Nick Price. Big, high, drawing shot. Watch this. Just skirts the edge of the hole and almost went in. We'll go back to 13. And I guess all the way home now to the 18th, he will hear this same applause in tribute of a five times master champion. And his valent try today at four under par. A tribute well deserved. And let's go back to 12 right now. Second shot for Kite. You know he can't be happy with that. Kite began the hole never trying to make birdie, and now he's going to have to work hard to make par as we go back to 10. And the troubles of Greg Norman. Greg, you can see, doing a little house cleaning there. His, his ball hit short of the gallery and then pitched into the, to the people and hit someone and stopped. So I'm presuming that he has a shot. I don't know, however, if he can come straight at the hole. We'll see in a moment. And or whether or not that tree in back of him is in play. Is his swing restricted? Yes, he's taking a funny stance here. What he's doing is closing the face of the club, taking a short backswing so that the ball will come off sharply at a left angle to go as... Oh. And he's just hit it much too hard and run through and over the green and into the bunker and over to 12. Ballesteros for birdie. He never factored two into his equation here at 12. Play the hole to make three. That's what he made. Yesterday in his round of 72, he only missed two greens. Frustrating day when he played so well from tee to green. He's been laying back patiently, patiently, letting others make mistakes. He's played solidly today. To 10. Greg Norman set to play. Taking a look at his lie, I imagine the ball as slow as it was going into the bunker, it probably didn't make it to the bottom. So he has somewhat of an uphill lie. Sitting cleanly, however. And there you can see a stance, it is uphill. And that needs to hurry. But not bad. We'll go back to 12. Kite to save par. What a fine effort.
Can't put those problems of, in the past at 12 to rest. Let's go four to 13. Jack Nicholas surveying this some 45 footer from the center of the green. What makes it difficult here is now the long shadows. He has to go, his ball is in the shadow of one of the tall pines and goes from the sun in the shadow, which is hard to really see the breaks. But uh, by no means uh, to make it would be a miracle, but it still has a chance. He is, uh, must have some confidence, of course, missing the one at, at 12 for par, but he made some pretty good putts at 9, 10, and 11. Jack at four under par. And back in the fairway, the players are watching Jack play. Watson and Tommy Nakajima, who hit thunderous drives out there. So Nicholas now, from 45 feet, uphill, it doesn't really do very much. It won't break too much to the right. If he doesn't make three, he really has to walk away with four to have any chance at all. Amazing with all this people, the silence. Got to go. It's got to go. If it was harder, it might have missed on the left anyway, I believe. But it's a good lag putt. He'll have that short putt for birdie and make up for the bogey at 12. He will go back to five under par. Even though it is birdie, he will not make up the, the stroke he lost at 12. You just can't make him up. But we'll go back to 10. Greg Norman's putt for bogey. And that is a double bogey. Greg's second double bogey on this hole. He four putted this hole earlier this week. Nick Price for birdie. And that's a good birdie and that'll get Nick back on the play the back nine the way he did yesterday in route to 63. Having a little tougher go today. Greg Norman has kicked away two shots here at the 10th hole, and Seve maintains the lead. Well, welcome back to Augusta, everybody. I'm Brett Musbury along with Tom Weisskopf. Tom, doesn't get any better than this. No, it doesn't. Each of these players within two strokes, or any player, controls their own destiny now. They have to make the decision whether to play conservative on certain holes that are coming up, or whether to take the bold approach and risk losing the tournament. All right, let's go out to the 13th now. Here's Ken Venturi. Tom Kite on the tee at 13. Must make it go right to left, get as close down that side. Perfect position. Perfect drive. What a beautiful drive. He will definitely be shooting at the green on his second shot. And Ballesteros now with his length. Holes, I believe the next three are really made for his tee shots. He can draw each one of them. 13, 14, and his length it will help him at 15. But this is the task at hand right now, the tee shot at 13. Looking anxiously. Uh, he hit it fine right out there where it's kite and that is two good drives and just a moment ago in front of them Tom Watson's second shot from 170 yards you can tell you how big that tee shot was and he has that left for eagle that would put him to five under we are looking at a tremendous amount of explosive players with Six holes left to play. Six and five holes. These people can solid put some numbers on you. And I don't know of many of them here that back off. Let's go back to the studio and Brent Musburger. 
Ken, quickly, but with the Jay Haas, who turned in a 67 at 5 under in the clubhouse. Yeah. Jay, now for the rest of the field coming in, what awaits them down the stretch here? Uh, I had a little trouble at 14. I misjudged just a little bit there. The pin, uh, I've never seen it where it was today. It's on the slight downslope uh, on the right side. The best position is back edge or past the pin, and I was trying to get a little too close there and spun it down the hill, made a 5 there. But the wind's really not a factor out there today. Uh, course is playing about the same as yesterday at uh, yielding a lot of birdies, I think. All right, Jay, congratulations. Thank you for dropping by. Let's go out to 13 again, and here's Ken Venturi. Tommy Nakajima, who hit his second shot just over the green, and this is a very delicate little chip shot. Got to come up over a rise to a plateau, and then it starts downhill, and once it starts over the hill and gets within about 15 feet, it begins to pick up speed. And not many people from this position have got it within four or five feet today. Nakajim with one over today, three under for the tournament. Here's a pretty good touch right here. Now just get over, but he'll lose it to the right. He'll break down. And we've seen that more times. You think it's not fast? Just take a look at that one right there. That's a good 12, 14 feet to the right and down the hill. It's been almost impossible to get the ball anywhere near the hole from back of the screen. As we watch here, Tom Watson lining up. Here's some finishing scores for you. <coughs> Larry Mize today had 65. Sam Randolph will be low amateur because he's the only amateur to make the cut. Billy Cratchit did well. Crenshaw and Jay Haas, what a good pairing that was today. They both played excellent. As we have a moment, we'll go back to 11 for a second. Greg Norman's second shot from about 180 yards. Norman, who's been fighting a swing all day long. To 13. Tommy Nakajima for birdie up the hill. And again, it's been missed that same way so many times. It's easy to read them when you sit here and watch numerous amount of players putt. So Nakajima will settle for par as we go to 17. This is Payne Stewart for par. He was 18 feet away for birdie. And with that putt may go his hopes for this year. He's back to four under, to 14. Jack Nicholas looking over his second shot. From Dead center of the fairway. He's got 155 yards to the flag. One thing Jack is going to make sure he does here is get it over this crest that runs right through the front of this green. Jay Haas said it uh, very well there just a minute ago. Want to get the ball past the flag here. If you're short of this green, you've got a lot of problems. Jack has hit it right back there in the back of the green. You can make four from there. It's very difficult to make four short of this green. Let's go 13. Well, you saw the result. Tom Watson tapping in for his, his birdie, and there's no need to say what happened on the first putt. He lost it on the low side. Disappointing, because if he had made that eagle, I'm telling you, Tom Watson would have come out of the shoot at 14 with everything flying and been waiting back in the fairway by Asteros and kite by Asteros is one hundred and ninety five yards. Cannot afford to lose it to the right here whatsoever. After bail bail left. That is right in the middle almost where Nicholas hit it. In fact, he's running up. Watch out. Here it comes. Here it comes. What a beautiful shot. The difference between Nicholas's and Ballesteros shot is that Ballesteros shot released and Nicholas just grabbed up. He has got that with about eight feet for Eagle. And you can tell, I think he likes it. Tom Kite had a marvelous drive.
Tom Kite has to look at that from the fairway. I think he was thinking maybe with a good shot he might pick up a shot or so on him. He's taking a good look at it. Tom Kite just about the same distance. Tommy is always something to watch another ball up there when you're trying to catch the guy and he's got an eagle up there. That was a great shot and I'm sure he's disappointed but he has to forget about that Ken and attack that pin I feel. Attack it he is he's right on line. Get up ball you got to go. And just the opposite of Ballesteros is he's checked up like Nicholas is so Ballesteros played his to run a little bit and ran to within eight feet but Tom Kite will be a good 35 feet away right on the same line that Ballesteros is. So not only will Kite putt first but Ballesteros will be able to watch the line and the break as Kite's ball comes to the hole. And Ballesteros walking down the right side of the fairway. Fine applause. Well deserved as we go to 18 quickly. And just a moment ago, Calvin Pete for birdie. Good day for Calvin. Back to 13. We'll go to 14 first. Jack Nicholas from behind the green. A downhill pitch shot of about 40 feet. Jack threw it into the fringe. He's going to let the ball go down. This looks real good. Who said he's a bad chipper? Jack is this hole here, 14th hole, is sandwiched between two par fives, 13, which you have to be very aggressive, and 15, which you have to be very aggressive to win this championship. This hole, you cannot be aggressive at all today. You will walk away with a bogey. Sandy Lyle now at the front of this green. That's the bottom of that swale you see right behind Sandy. You can see the depth of it just by the way those people are standing. That wasn't uh, the best of efforts right there. Samuel Mark and clean his ball. Try to figure out why that putt went the other way. Let's, let's go to 15. Corey Pavin made a magnificent eagle on Saturday. Here's another opportunity to repeat the feat. From 30 feet, gathering pace, and he is suddenly right in the middle of it at six under par. Corey Pavin started the day two under par, had it to four under coming in here, and is now in great shape as we go to the 13th. Tom Kite taking a good look at this. He very well knows what he has to do. He knows his position. There's a scoreboard to the left of the 14th tee but he's playing with the leader so he really doesn't concerned about what everybody else is doing because right now you have to beat Ballesteros if you're going to win the Masters. Tom Kite 35 feet uphill move to his right and right almost across Ballesteros's coin. That's way too high. And he's about two and a half feet way too high. Ballesteros did not even watch the ball roll. He didn't even look at it. He wanted to form his own opinion. Sometimes that's pretty good because you can be influenced by someone else's stroke and it's not what you really see. Let's go to 17 quickly. Curtis Strange, memories of a year ago. 
Well, that's not going to win him the green jacket, but it'll uh, provide some solace for the day. Out of the bunker with his third shot. It'll go to even par. We go to 13. Right now, I believe you're looking at the hammer. Right here, this is this is something. He's seven under, and leading by one, 14 quickly. Here we have Tom Watson. His second shot. Boy, well, how's that one? That's about the closest one we've seen today. Ballesteros, this could give him a three-stroke lead if he makes this for his second eagle of the day. Hello. Dead flat center. He goes to nine under par, leaving the 13th hole. A three-shot lead over Pavin and Kite. And Kite still has to make this putt. I would hate to think that a three shot lead with five holes to play by Asteros would be one man I wouldn't care to try to catch too often. Kite really is taking his time, not because I don't think he really is that unsure about the putt. He has to gather his composure, making birdie and losing a shot. Made a beautiful save at 12. This can put him at seven under, two behind, with five great holes left. And Kite and Ballesteros leave 13, going to 14, and Ballesteros leading Kite by two shots. And now it's just let's wait and see what happens as we go to 16. And a red hot Corey Pavin on the tee. He's played this hole four over the first three rounds and he doesn't like this one either. Exactly what happened yesterday. He followed up the Eagle at 15. With a shot in the water at 16. Made a double bogey. Today Eagle 15. And again he's found the water at 16. Bogey, bogey, double bogey. The first three rounds here at the par 316. Seve Ballesteros taking command at nine under par. Two on top of Tom Kite. Corey Pavin, three back, but in trouble. Back now at the Augusta National. Tom Weiskopf thinking about Corey Pavin shot. He'd gone bogey, bogey, double bogey down there on the 16th. Uh, what is a golfer's problem on a certain hole? Well, first of all, Brent, he was forced to attack the pin, being six under Seve at nine. Secondly, uh, the players play with a lot of recall, memory, and his memory of this hole the last three days is not positive. Sometimes they just have trouble with the hole. Mark McCumber has jumped up. He had an eagle on the 15th. He now is 500, and he will come charging toward the top. But right now, it is Seve Ballesteros' masters to lose. He has a two-stroke lead, and let's go to the 14th. Four. Earlier, Tom Watson for a birdie. Let's go to 12. Second shot of Greg Norman. Putter from the back friend, sort of a forgotten man with all the excitement on the back nine here at Augusta National. Man whose first appearance here at Augusta in 1981 finished fourth. And that's been his best finish. Two eighteen. Fuzzy seller. Just a moment ago. And that is the fourth birdie of the day for Finish of 72 for Fuzzy, one under. To 12. Well, Nick Price not out of it yet. He has about a 20 footer for birdie. They'll put him back to five under as he started the day.
Price led the British Open in 1982 with six holes to play, only to lose to Watson by a shot. And he has a lot of work left for par. Norman struggling with his swing. When you put pressure on yourself like that in a final round of a major championship, each hole gets harder and harder. Having to make putts like this for par, sometimes your nerves just can't take it. He got it up and down for par on one, up and down for par on two, the same thing on four. Seemed to be a foreshadowing of what was to come today. With his length, 13 and 15 are reachable. Eagle is a possibility, but he needs us for par. All right, Greg Norman remains at five under. Now's the time to gamble. He talked about playing safe on the par fives. He can not do that anymore. Bottom of Amen Corner gotten very quiet here. Hardly a ripple in Ray's Creek. And Price remains four under to 14. Seve Ballesteros, 155 yards. This, that must mean get down. That's exactly where you have to put the golf ball with a two shot lead. Tom Kite is in a different position now. He has got to get a little bit aggressive with this shot. He's got 150 yards. Tom doesn't want to play long ball with Seve here on the next hole, which is a par five, and he's going to have to try to hit this ball right on the top of that ridge and try to get this ball close to get a birdie. See, he really tried to lift that to get that ball up in the air. As you can see, he has had a beautiful golf shot. Greg Norman on the tee, and now he has to pull all the stops. Four behind the leader. Good look at the hole from the tee there. Good drive. Boy, that is long. That's just about where Watson drove it. We go to 15. Jack Nicholas has 200 yards and he never needed an eagle more. There have been three eagles in the last four players. Pavin, Coke and McCumba. And he's got a chance. He's got a very, very good chance of an eagle three to make him seven under par. And the old bear is back. Seve Ballesteros, however, enjoying a two-stroke advantage over Tom Kite after 13 holes. Tom Weisskopf, you've had some great duels with Jack Nicklaus. So how are you feeling about his charge right now and this is the final round of the 86 Masters? Well, he's making good swings. He's just a little bit too far behind. He really needs to make three here, Brent. This is a must for Jack Nicklaus, I feel. Well, let's go out to Ben Wright. And uh, it's interesting that Jack has checked on the leaderboard. Uh, the first thing he did when he arrived here to that thunderous ovation, and he knows exactly what he has to do. And let's go to the 14th. Seve Ballesteros. He's got about a 20-footer, the flattest part of this green. This ball is going to go a little bit from his right to the left. Tom Kite has got it about eight feet away, right on Seve's line. So he is a very interested bystander right now. Ooh. 
Oof. Seve played the hole the way he had to. He got the ball over the ridge, the back of the green. Let's go to 18. And Curtis Strange. That's for birdie. He's even par. That's will help with last year's heartbreak. Back to 14. Tom Kite surveying about a six, seven foot putt. This putt is very, very important to Tom with a par five coming up next that he knows Seve's gonna be able to get there. Tom has got a real good chance to get there also, but you just about give the fact that Seve's gonna make four. And that's how he's gotta approach this putt right here. We should not leave those short. A golden opportunity right there for Tom Kite going to the next tee. Let's go to the 15th hole. And Jack Nicholas and his son Jackie, his oldest son, himself a North and South amateur champion, have really looked at this one from every conceivable angle. Jack has backed off because there is applause from the gallery at the 16th hole nearby. And he has this putt for an eagle that will slide a little to his right. And he will wait for absolute quiet. And this to go seven under par. is joined. My goodness. There's life in the old bear yet. Magnificent stuff. And that information will percolate back to uh, Seve Ballesteros as he goes to the 15th tee where he will have to wait. And also an interested spectator, Tom Watson, who knows that his old rival has got the better of him, of him at the moment, Watson and Nakajima, and also waiting on the tee. That enormous roar has got to have given uh, Ballesteros some idea what he's got to do. That's Sandy Lyle for a very nice birdie, rather overshadowed as he goes to three under, and we go to the 13th. The second shot of Greg Norman he has to make his move here. It's going left. We'll look out. And as the ball slides down the hill, I think he can feel the green coat sliding away to 15 quickly. Tom Watson from 210 yards. Eagles are becoming almost as common as your household sparrow. And there's another chance for one. Great shot by Watson. We have had four eagles in the last few minutes here. It really is a dramatic hole, the pivotal point of the inward half. Tommy Nakajima started the day four under par, is three under at the moment. And that is a huge drive. He's hit down the left-hand side. The wind is a, a mere zephyr, nothing to worry about. Nakajima from 200 yards. Telling it to hook, and uh, that was a pretty fair instruction. But he's got uh, a good chance of a birdie at, at worst. 
and it's incredible in this these last few minutes eagles for pave in mccumber coke and nicholas and back to the 13th greg norman's third shot and as we've said all day very difficult to even get it close starts it over the hill this may be one of the best but watch a pickup speed keep on going and that's about as good as anyone has done all day and he got it within five feet. And let's go to 15. And now ready to crank it up and give it his all. Seve Ballesteros right from the left hand side of the tee. That is huge. That is huge. That is less than 200 yards, I would say, from the green. So he's hit it uh, around about 300 yards, just a mere 300. Tom Kite matched that. But he's sneaky long. Certainly he's uh, got a lot longer than he was a few years ago. He didn't spare anything there. And that's a really quite splendid drive. And we'll go forward to the 16th. And Jack Nicholas, knowing he must continue the charge, he has to figure that Ballesteros will make at least birdie back at 15. If anyone has ever owned this hole, it would be Jack Nicholas when he won his first green jacket back in 1963. He did it with a birdie here at 16. And of course, who can forget 1975? The 40 foot putt. Tom Weiskopf, what is going through Jack's mind right now? He has not experienced this kind of a streak in a long time. If I knew the way he thought, I would have won this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, seriously, he is just going to fire this right at the pin. He's going to think, Jack, this is time right now. Make the swing that you are capable of making. Stay down, accelerate through the ball, make a good golf swing. Your destiny is right here. It's right at it. Oh my. Back on the tee, he really has no idea just how close he is. Well, you know, with the flag stick right over the bunker. Jim, a lot of people don't realize the fact that Jack really doesn't see that well. He probably has no idea really how close that ball is on the green. Anybody else could see the ball, believe me, from that tee. Tom, that shot was within two inches of going into the cup. And Sandy Lyle playing along with Jack. I mean, how do you follow that one up? That was a great shot. He certainly has done a nice job. Jack Nicholas within three feet of moving to eight under par. At the 15th hole, of course, Tommy Nakajima hasn't had a chance to, to play because uh, he's going to wait for Nicholas's standing ovation. If ever a man so richly deserved it, Jack Nicholas, the dominant golfer of all time and certainly of this past 30 years.
Tom Weisskopf, that has to be one of the greatest thrills in all of sports, to walk toward the green to a thunderous ovation like that, Augusta. Undoubtedly. I wish I could just one more time have that opportunity, Brent. I think that's all Jack Nicholas wanted was just one more time. But remember what he told you, Tom? He said, I put together my best two rounds of the year. Let's go to 15. And eventually, the ball will reach the hole from Tommy Nakajima, who has had to back off and back off and back off. And that uh, was for an eagle. And uh, I need hardly remind you that Tom Watson is lurking, ready to confront an eagle putt of his own, which would get him right back into the picture. And it's like days of old. To the 16th. Sandy Lyle for birdie. Tell you, that wasn't easy to do. Having to follow the shot of Jack Nicholas and then walk up and make a two of your own. Lyle now four under. Tom Weiskopf, do you think Seve knows exactly what's going on? He earlier in the week said he was not even watching the scoreboard during play. Let's go to 15. Watson has decided to get it done quickly. His putt for an eagle goes left to right, and that uh, had no chance. And I'm sure he hurried that uh, when there was quiet, because he knew that when uh, Nicholas putted, there would be a tremendous roar. So that's uh, a, nevertheless a significant birdie, and uh, he goes to six under par. Now Tommy Nakajima. He, too, watching the 16th green, he doesn't want to get this blast in the ears. And we'll go to the 16th. Ben, as you see, Nakajima waiting until Nicholas hits the spot. And there's no doubt about it. The bear has come out of hibernation. Back to 15. Tommy Nakajima once again gets set after a long wait. And that's his birdie for four under par and watching and listening at the top of the hill. Seve Ballesteros has hit his drive just over 300 yards, but uh, Tom Kite will be away. There is uh, two-time Masters champion, and now Tom Kite, who would love to wear that green jacket that uh, his consistency almost demands before he's finished. He has 220 yards to the hole, and I think that's a three iron. Bringing it from right to left. And he too will have an eagle opportunity. And now, Seve Ballesteros, he hit the drive 302 yards, has 198 yards to the flagstick. Just a little breath of wind from right to left. That'll be a four iron. Oh, he's pulled it. He has pull hooked that. That's destined for the water. And the foreign invasion is uh, reeling under the bear's attack. A crestfallen Seve Ballesteros with his elder brother, Vicente, taking that long, lonely walk over to the 16th. 
17th make that. And on the tee of this 400 yard par four, Jack Nicholas. Prowling after his 20th major win and his sixth Masters Championship at the age of 46. We're still searching. It's not good, whatever. And while we search, let's go back to 16. Tommy Nakajima at four under par. Another good looking shot here. A little bit long. Nakajima says when it reaches springtime in Japan they think about the Masters. Millions watching today back home now earlier Tom Watson. On the green safely but. Certainly not what he needed at this point. To 15. Seve Ballesteros. With the rules. Committee members he has the option of dropping the ball in the drop area which is to the right of your picture or at the point of entry which is chosen and uh, Tom Weisskopf it's really uh, a very difficult choice for him does he play off the flat part right by the water or does he go back up the hill well, I think he'll walk back to see his option back there, Ben, and then he may come back ahead because, as you've said, that is such a level lie, and he's a master with the wedge. So the choice really gets down to, do I want to drop here now, Seve, and put more spin on the ball, or do I want to go up ahead and play a different type of shot with less spin? Obviously, he has taken that choice, Ben, which is, I think is a good, smart choice. He's still got... Uh a horribly difficult little half shot that has proved fatal so many times in the history of this event. And once again, the 15th hole becomes the pivotal hole of the tournament. Seve now set to play his fourth shot. And when you think uh, of Jack Nicklaus's Eagle Three, that puts it into its right perspective. Ben? Yes, sir. This is certainly no easy pitch especially after the poor second shot that he's just played. Indeed. Players have hit the ball thin. They've whacked it fat into the water, but that looks awfully good. Just couldn't get any stop on the ball, but uh, he has a, an outside chance of his par, and that is a very tricky putt that he has because it's a big left to right swing. And Seve has played this hole in the most extraordinary manner. He made a dreadful bogey the first day, made a glorious eagle the second, and a birdie on Saturday. And as uh, he comes across the Saracen Bridge, we'll go forward to the 16th. Tom Watson with a lengthy putt. Certainly needing something big to happen right now. Well, he had the right speed. Tom at six under, which right now is good for fourth place. Forward to 17. Where Jack Nicholas pulled his tee shot to the left, and they are moving the gallery out of the way. We are told that he does have a clean shot to the green. 125 yards, one heck of a break. That pin, as you can see, is cut well back. Might recall a couple of years ago, we'll go back to 14. Moments ago, Greg Norman. For a birdie. Trying to get, there it goes, trying to get close, trying. He's got a par five count up. Let's go to 15. Tom Kite for an eagle three. 
and that was uh, really a rather undistinguished stroke. He could have taken the lead out right with that uh, eagle putt. And we'll go forward to the 16th. Nakajima now for birdie. We have seen three putts from that spot all day. Very slick coming down the hill. Back to 15. And Sevi Ballesteros trying to salvage his power. This, those wonderful soft hands with that fluid feel. And now we have a tie with the old bear here. Let's go to the 17th. And the old bear is oblivious to what has just happened back at 15, of course, concentrating on his second shot from in between two pines, 125 yards out. He's asking Jackie right now, where is it? And the crowd, I'm sure, has let him know. The magic is still there. Back to the 15th. And now, Sevi Ballesteros for a bogey. That will, uh, if he makes it, leave him tied now. With Tom Kite and Jack Nicholas. This was Tom Kite's birdie putt to tie the lead. So we have now a triple tie. Tom Kite, Jack Nicholas, Seve Ballesteros. A playoff perhaps down the 10th hole? We will see. And there you see the incredible situation. No, no names there. We look back up the hill. Bernhard Langer has been a witness to all of this, the, the defending champion. And that's Donny Hammond from 200 yards. Leaving himself with a very difficult left to right slider from behind the green. Langer, who's made such a spirited defense of his title has a three iron in his hands as we look at this glorious scene and that green looks awfully shallow when you're at the top of the hill and the dark shadows over the water in the rear and the pond the dreaded pond pond in front Look, looking very good in the air. No, nope, too long. One too many as we go to the 16th. Co-leader Tom Kite. He's going to need the slope to help him here. Nope. Way too strong through the green. And that will be very, very difficult. Coming down the ever-present hill here on 16th green. Isn't it amazing to think that right now with Nicholas and Ballesteros and Kite tied for the lead, Watson in a tie for fourth right now, the golfers who have virtually dominated this tournament during the 70s and 80s have all congregated right at the top of the leaderboard. Extraordinary. Now Seve after, well, Jack Nicholas 
on 17. But Seve now after playing partner Tom Kite has gone long. This is right, right on the top of the bunker. I mean, that just missed backing up into the trap. Forward to 17. Jack Nicholas has looked over this birdie opportunity from about 18 feet. Go back 11 years to 1975 and Nicholas in that terrific tournament with Tom Weisskopf and Johnny Miller replaced the names for 1986. Ballesteros and Kite, it's remarkably reminiscent. And here's the constant. This is for sole possession of the lead. Maybe. Yes, sir! Isn't this great to see? And Sandy Lyle, who has been witness to this eruption on the back nine, is very much in the thick of things and currently at four under has this left for par. That's almost anticlimactic. Listen to the roar as Jack Nicholas heads to 18 again at the Masters in Augusta. Watch it again. Tom Weisskopf? Well, we're going to see something that he hasn't done all week. He kept his head still for a change. Center cut. I'm for you, Jack. Tom, you must have just a, a jumble of emotions watching this. I jumped up. That's the record book of golf we're looking at right there. And let's go to Pat Summerall. And Ken Venturi has joined me now. And not much really needs to be said. That's the way it looks now. You know, they talked about He's not doing well for the past year or so. He hadn't gotten in contention, but when he got there, he remembers what it was all like, and he's throwing back into it. And we'll go to 16 first. And a tough shot for Tom Kite, right below us here at 16. Using the blade off the backside. And there's just no stopping that one. Offline the whole way, but the distance there was the key. They now have a seven to eight footer coming back for par. Now Seve must contend with a very awkward stance. And talking to his brother Vicente was caddying for him this week. Tom Weiskopf, this will affect his grip as well. Have to go way down on the shaft to hit this shot. Well, this is when a player's imagination has to take over. Just like right there, he's improvised right there with a with a separated type of of uh, grip on his putter. Uh, the balance which he's trying to gain right now in the bunker is so important because he's just trying to figure out where, where he can be comfortable and. Uh, it's just a matter of imagination. And Very well done.
the great shot makers, the great players in the game, always very creative. And certainly Seve was there to 18. And on the tee. Seven under today, five times a champion. Four under on the last three holes. Eagle at 15, birdie at 16, birdie at 7. Got a good break at 17, but when you're good, it breaks four your way. And if there's any doubt about the greatness of this man, it is proven today. I think it to me it's one of the emotional masters I've ever witnessed. Yeah, Pat. I agree. I can't. I just think it's just I'm just just phenomenal. Well, look at that round. And how it came about. You almost sold him out after he made bogey at 12. If he wins his 20th major title. What an important tee shot right now. The last hole. <laughs> Took that left to right. You couldn't walk it out there any better, Pet. Really? To 16. Seve for par. Tom Kite made his putt for par. And Seve has his. So they both remain one back of the bear as we head into the final two holes. Nicholas, the leader, by one. Well, we're back at the Augusta National witnessing one of the great scenes in the history of the Masters. It was back in 1963, at the age of 23, when Jack Nicklaus won his first of five green jackets. Now at the age of 46, 1986, Nicklaus is trying to make it a record sixth, and he will walk up to a thunderous ovation here at Augusta. You can feel the electricity throughout the air, and you can hear television sets all across this country coming to this dance one that many of us thought we would never see again. His last tour victory was back in 1984, and now Jack Nicklaus is on the verge of doing it one more time here at Augusta. Let's quickly go to 15. This was Greg Norman just a few moments ago after a huge drive of 310 yards, 190 to the flagstick, he had the range, but the direction was just a touch awry. He still has an eagle opportunity that will bring him up to eight under par if he can make it, and he's got another three holes to go. We must not count him out. And let's go to the 17th. And on the green, all but forgotten, and the emotion of this day is Tom Watson, who is six under, and this is for birdie. And Tom and Tommy Nakajima have been accompanied en route in the back nine to this thunderous applause that uh, erupts each time the scoreboards change and news travels quickly of what is happening up ahead with Jack Nicholas. Nakajima at four under and has this putt left for his par four. Nakajima en route to his best masters ever, and he heads to the 18th at four under, and we'll go there as well. Uh, Jack waiting. Gary Koch putting on just below us. And Ken Venturi, what is possibly in Jack Nicklaus's head right now. Well, there are a number of things, I think, Pat. One, he's contemplating winning his six Masters, his 20th major. So many titles, it's hard to even count whether he makes his sixth or not today. Uh, 
He is the greatest that ever played for his winning tournaments. Right now with the Sandy Lyle's second shot from the bunker. And that came up right and short of the bunker on the right. Nicholas now, Pat, has got to get the ball to the top shelf. Even has the chance going over the green. He can't come up short and roll it back because it'll roll back another 12, 15 feet. He 185 has, yards away, 185. Five iron he has. He right. selected a five, so he definitely has the club to get to the top shelf. I know he's won 19, but this may be the most important one, and I think he wants more than anyone he's ever won before. Look out. Get up. That's what I was afraid of. He got a little bit on the upswing and it caught it up a little bit high and it rolled back another 12 feet or so and he's faced now Pat with a good 50 footer. Back on that lower plateau. Yes that's usually where the pin is uh, on the final day. This is one time we have seen it on the top shelf in the middle back. Back over to 15. Greg Norman with his putt for an eagle. That's six under par just to go eight under. It is like glass. And that will not get there. And back to the 18th. That's the second shot of Seve Ballesteros with the noise of the Nicholas Ovation reverberating in his ears. Backed away once. And very similar Ken Venturi to yesterday. He has put that second shot some 35, 40 feet away. A little easier than it was yesterday, but uh, not very good chance at birdie, uh, Vern. Ballesteros bogeyed this hole yesterday and also bogeyed 18, and he's got his work cut out now here at the 71st hole of the 1986 Masters as Jack Nicholas is on the 18th green with a one shot lead. Sandy Lyle and Jack Nicholas. I think, Pat, in all my years in the golf, that to me was the most emotional and the, probably the largest ovation I have ever heard. Oh, I think so. Well deserved, and I'll tell you, when he gets over this putt, you will hear a pin drop. Over to 15. This was earlier at the 15th hole. Greg Norman, a birdie that takes him to seven under par. And we'll go back to the 18th. And Nicholas has done his surveying. Seven under on the last nine holes. Right now he's more concerned with the speed than he is with the break. Not quite that much break, it'll move a bit to his right, but the first 15, 20 feet is the most important. Get it started up that hill. Get up, All get right. up, get up. That was right in the middle, Pat. What an effort. What a play. Six inches. It was dead center. Really drops this in and you really hear an ovation. He's going to let Sandy putt which I think is a very good gesture right there. What do you suppose Ken. His son is thinking right now. I'll tell you what. If I was caddying for my father, I said I'd probably be the proudest person in the world. And he has a fine family, too. Lyle for par.
back to 16. Greg Norman. Spin. Bringing it in from the left side. Spin. Spin. Yes. Right to left action. Look at this. Tate. What a round. What a player. Ah, beautiful. That tells it all right there. Yeah, it really does. Back to 17. Uh, this is just extraordinary. That, uh, thunderous ovation from 18 echoing through the pines and coming back to 17 and Seve Ballesteros this was moments ago he three putted from 50 feet yesterday on this hole this is for birdie watch Ballesteros on the left wave at the ball now he's got 12 to 15 feet left for par second day in a row Three putt at 17. Very nice gesture by Ballesteros and the crowd. It, it just must have been inordinately difficult for him because as he tried to concentrate on the putt, the Nicholas ovation came ringing back to this area. Now Tom Kite, who is still very much in this, now in sole possession of second, and Tom Kite has this left for par. He was just on the front edge of the green with his second shot. And has this two-footer left for his four. Well done, Tom Kite. Very well done. Let's go to 18. Watson. Look out. What a big drive he hit around the corner. Watson six under. Nicholas in at nine under. And remember Norman is close. Yes that's for sure he has got. A excellent chance for birdie at 16 he'll go to eight under par. Not over yet. No you bet it's not. How Nicholas. often had we said that. The tournament starts Sunday afternoon at the 10th tee. Boy, isn't that the truth? As you look further down the leaderboard, great day for Jay Haas. But Nicholas, the leader, at minus nine. Back over to 17. Had all but forgotten back in the fairway, Bernhard Longer, who is four under par. And we'll go back to 18. And the ovation for Watson. Back to 17. Bernhard Longer, 145 yards away, the defending champion. Eight iron. To 16. Nick Price. That was for Birdie. Price at six under after birdies on 14 and 15. Now Greg Norman after that tremendous tee shot. Bringing it in from right to left, using the slope effectively. This putt could tie him for second. He's on. A little bit of a birdie barrage himself with birdies at 14 and 15. And this short one for another one. Undaunted so far by the buzz that 
has precipitated through this gallery here as Nicholas has made his charge. There you have it. He knows what he must do. Two to play and only one back. Jack Nicholas in the clubhouse at nine under par after a final round 65. One up on Tom Kite and Greg Norman. We're back at the 71st hole of the 1986 Masters 17. This is Greg Norman just a shot off the lead. And I'm sure somewhere in the recesses of his mind he is ruining the way he played the 10th hole today when he had that double bogey. But has come back with birdies at 14, 15, and 16 and trails by. Can you hold the cry there, please? Four! Keep it down. Got some gallery movement up uh, in the crosswalk in the fairway. And while we wait, let's go to 18. Nakajima. That's his birdie putt. It has been very difficult today, Pat, for a lot of the players because of the enthusiasm of the gallery with Nicholas. To 17. And on the tee, Greg Norman. Birdie this hole yesterday. Somebody didn't care for it. Pulled it left. Recall that Jack Nicholas had a similar fate and found some fortune in uh, winding up between two pine trees with a clean shot. Let's go to 18. And a huge and courteous gallery. Just reacting to other information that has come to them from out on the course. They just posted on the large leaderboard up here. Greg Norman's birdie at 16 to go to eight under. Ayesteros. Tremendous gallery, but as always, ever courteous. How easy it looked for him as he got to the eagle at 13 and then put it in the water at 16, three putt at 17, and now two behind. 170 yards Watch away. Watch this. Ball released on him, we'll put it just in the back of the green. He's with Kite. And Kite's 165 yards away. Kite eight under. And should we say more? Birdie to tie Nicholas for the lead. Six iron. 165. It has to be an awfully good six iron to get it all the way to the hole. Get up. Get up. Oh boy, it advanced forward. It, it wow. did not bite. That ball released, and what a good break. It's got to be no more than 10 feet, Pat. Clutch shot for Kite. Just one off the lead. One behind Nicholas. There's the leaderboard. Nicholas is through at minus nine. Kite and Norman tied at minus eight. And Norman one group behind. I guess Kite. Is the, has the best record of any player that ever played here without winning. And listen to the applause for Kite and for Ballesteros. Ah, oh, what a great gesture.
That was for the Spaniard, and now for Kite. If there should be a playoff, it will start at 10. What Ballesteros did with Bryn Lundquist said at 17 when he three putted and anybody would storm off and jam the club in the bag. He waved to the gallery appreciative and coming up 18. He has captured the gallery that is for sure. He's not going to capture the Masters this year. Even though he has two green jackets. But Ballesteros will will win more than two Masters. I will guarantee you that. As you said yesterday, the applause and all the accolades are are very rewarding, but this many people can also be very, very quiet. Oh yes, when Jack was putting and I'm sure even when Sebi putts it'll be quiet, but I tell you what, if you thought it was quiet for Jack, wait till Tom Kite putts. Right. By Asteros, uh, just off the, the back fringe. Remember a few years ago when he won, we were saying if he can just get this close that he hold it. That's right, went right in the back. Back over to 17. That is the ball of Greg Norman, and you see the problems he had. He hooked it left, just short of the seventh green. And Ken, you remember when Seve Ballesteros pulled it left and uh, parred this hole from the seventh green a few well, years ago? He was on the green and was able to drop off. Let's go to 18. And here's Ballesteros, just about ready. Slow down, slow down. Well, it would be hard to believe he almost made the putt at 14, which it would have been all over but the shouting. And he missed that and then hooked it at 15 to make bogey. Got a bad break on the bunker at 16 and then three putt at 17, and that was all she wrote there. And now he's put this by a good six, seven feet. Here's the putt by Kite. And this would tie him with Nicholas. I got sweaty palms. I wonder how they feel out there. It's just, it just, this is probably the premier masters. This putt is going to go a little bit to his left. And this is one putt right here. Don't be short. Short. He have he had to hit it. He lost its speed, took the break. The only thing it lacked was a little more speed. To 17. And now it's up to Greg Norman. Second shot. And he has to manufacture one. Isn't that something? Twelve feet away. And we go back to 18. And by Asteros. Before he puts, you know, you're not supposed to do these things in golf, what you're just watching. Get in. Good putt. That's a good finishing score. Disappointing two holes, 15 and 17. What a good champion. What a good player. Back to 17. And Nick Price, second shot from 125 yards out with a nine iron.
just on the back edge. Price currently at six under after that round of 63 yesterday. He's one under for today, but now the world of golf is focused upon the great white shark from Australia, Greg Norman, as he walks up the 71st hole. And to 18. And the defending champion who's played so well, Bernhard Lunger. Took it right between the trees. Look out right. Bunker. He just couldn't make a charge today. Pat, he's started at five under. He got it to six. Then he dropped one at seven and he dropped one at eight. And then he's been all pars from the ninth hole through 17. Nicholas at nine. Kite just finished at eight. Norman still with a couple of holes. That was can't get over what a great shot he played at 17 through the trees hooking it missing the bunker. This is Donnie Hammond. Used to be a gallery guard here. His first master's appearance and it's been a good one for him. Right edge. And again, here is the situation. Nicholas has finished after shooting 65 at nine under. Kite has just finished. He is at minus eight. Norman is playing 17, and he too is minus eight. So that's where the focus will be from now on on Greg Norman. This is for Bernhard Langer. That has to be one of the most moving scenes anywhere in the arena. Back to 17. Birdie effort of Nick Price on the way. But Price stays at six under par with one hole to play. One challenger left. And the name is Norman. And he's got that much left for Birdie to tie Nicholas. Jack had uh, a putt of almost similar distance from the opposite side of the hole. Made that to take the lead for the first time. Yes, sir! My gracious, what a day. And we'll go with Greg Norman to the 72nd tee. Patrick? Well, Ken Venturi and I were just talking. I can't remember. And I've been here 19 years now. I can't remember a Masters like this. I came here, my first Masters was in 1954, and I have never seen, I can't remember a golf tournament to top this one. And I talked about the galleries. No galleries in golf can ever surpass the galleries in, at the Masters. They are the best. 
Norman goes to nine under. He has birdied the last four holes. In the meantime, back up at the green, Donnie Hammond. Get up and go. You got it. He is only about a foot away for his four. Bernhard Longer was in the bunker and caught a little bit thin and put it over the green. Greg Nolan back at the tee. Wow. If there should be a playoff, they'll start at 10. As Nicholas's tee shot here, as I said, this is all important, as it all important to Greg. The tee shot is what sets up this entire hole. There's bunkers to the left, as you see. And trees to the right. The ideal shot is to take it from left to right, away from the bunkers. And I don't believe he has a driver in his hand, Pat. Doesn't look like it. I think it's three wood. Trying to move it left to right, looking at the bunker and move right off that bunker into the fairway. There it is, middle of the fairway. Couldn't be any better. He should probably have close, I would say, from where he is, probably about 175, I would think. It's about right. Nicholas was 100 and what, 65? 65, and I don't think he's got as far as Jack did, but he did hit a three wood. There's a young man we were talking about. Curtis Strange last year wouldn't the demand shoot 80 and win and it looked like this man was shot 79 in the first round and he might win. Nick he, Price. He hooked that one. And it will find the bunker. Up at the green. Bernhard Lunger. This for bogey. The defending champion. Finishes with a disappointing six at 18 and two under for the tournament. I think you can see uh, with his expression and his emotions and his gestures how he feels about that. He just couldn't get it in the gear this morning. He just, today, he just never made a charge, never was really a factor. Well, now, Ken, it all rests on those broad shoulders of Greg Norman. Well, destiny will take its stand right now, and what, whether it will be Jack Nicholas or Greg Norman, only Greg Norman now can determine that. They just put Norman's birdie up that he just recorded at 17, and that's the reason for the reaction you just heard. What a tremendous finish. The last four holes have produced some of the greatest shots oh. I have ever witnessed in golf. A bear and a shark tied. Are we safe? Well, as <laughs> long as the bear doesn't go in the water. The last person to birdie 18 for victory was in 1960. It was Arnold Palmer. Who'd he beat? He beat the guy sitting next to me, Ken Venturi. You remember? <laughs> I never forgot. He finished 3-3-3. Three, three, three. What a great finish it was, though. It really was. Now, that was 26 years ago, and today we're looking at the man that either goes down the 10th hole, which is the playoff hole, or he wins it outright. It's been 26 years since a man has birdied the 18th hole to win. And I know there have been more than men that, though, Pat, that have made bogeys to lose it. Isn't that the truth? And the crowd in anticipation already is gathered back by 10. That's the 10th green you see right there. They are circled around it. 
Uh, this is Greg Norman looking at 18. As Caddy said, it's the perfect club. Looking right up the throat of the green. Cannot see the base of the of the flag, but he knows exactly how far it is. Not a breath of wind. It is 90 feet from the front of the green. He is close to 200 to the hole. He has a four iron. Look out right side. Look out right gallery. Way back into the gallery. Into the gallery. Right of the bunker. Way back in the crowd. He will have to call upon all of the talents he had at the beginning of the round, Pat, where he saved par at the first, the second, and the fourth holes. He now is faced with one of the most difficult little pitches down the hill you ever saw, and there's the dejection that you see. Almost impossible from where he is to get that close, although he has accomplished some miracles today. Here's Price. Price 170 yards away. And he's right. But on the green. Norman has got some work to do. Nicholas and Norman tied. Greg Norman is zero and three in playoffs, and you might remember something similar happened to him in the U.S. Open. He is far right, over behind the bunker. And I think can anything close would be sort of miraculous, don't you? I think if he got it as close as Tom Kite got it uh, on his second shot, he would be very happy with it. But he has done some marvelous things. And it's just say, you look at the way it has progressed, Pat. He started out very, you know, shaky today, making very tough pars at one. At par five, second hole, he made a hard par. Saved a good putt there. Made a miraculous par at four. Uh, he's done some things that's kind of been up and down. And but the birdie at 16 and 17, he didn't get up and down at 13. He made five there. Well, the second shot at 17 was. That was as good as I think has ever been played there right. from where he was there. But he's got a pretty good lie. I mean, he's got a pretty good shot at the. It depends on the lie because the gallery's there, so the ball might be sitting down a little bit because of the people who've been standing around there. But he can't land this on the green. I don't believe he can put it all the way to the green. It has to get the downslope, and then depends how it takes off. It can run fast or just hit soft. He has he has his work cut out for him. Well, he's got the canyon almost cleared out now. Gallery back. And again, when he gets ready, you'll be amazed at how quiet this many people can be. Jack Nicholas, by the way, is watching the finish in the Bobby Jones cabin, which is just over back of 10. What do you think of this, Ken? Well, he's trying to bring it from right to left, but right there, that tells it all. You knew where it was. It just didn't move. And Trying to bring it right to left off that lie is what he's played all day. He hit it too much right to left at 13. He might have been thinking about the shots that he hooked it at 17 and to protect against going left here, he just hung it out to the right. It was hard to believe when went through 13 my hole where I was there, Pat, mm -hmm. then with Ballesteros making the, the three. Uh, you would never in your wildest dream think that he could put it in the water at 15 from where he drove the ball. It just everything seems to happen here. This not only difficult little pitch shot but for the situation the last hole needs four to get down to tie for the Masters. Thinking of anything of winning now is out of the question on this hole. It would take a miracle. 
has to let this go. It's a little short of the green and let it run down. All in all, Pat, not too bad. Played a little bump and run down that hill. And I would say it's almost about the same length as Tom Kite's putt was, except on the other side of the hole. It's makeable, but not easy by any means. That's the last two of the day. Nick Price, Greg Norman. Mentioned before that uh, Norman's only been in three playoffs, and he's zero and three in playoffs. If one should occur, Nicholas is 13 and 10 in playoffs. Nick Price missed to put him seven under. Amazing to go 72 holes and then see where only one shot, one putt will separate the winner and the runner up. Par and he'll finish six under. And I'll tell you, starting with 79, that is a fine, fine performance. Nick Price. Who shot 63 yesterday. But this is today. said with Tom Kite's putt the one thing he doesn't want to do is not give it a chance get it to the hole you've been here all day Pat you haven't seen many made from there have you no five birdies all day this for par however Jack Nicholas has just won his sixth Masters. What a tournament. That is hard to believe. What a finish. This is for a second. To tie with Tom Kite. Jack Nicholas wins his sixth Masters, his 20th major championship, at the age of 46, four years older than anyone ever has been as a champion of the Masters. Gary Player was 42 when he won. There goes Nicholas. And we'll be right back with that closing ceremony as soon as Jack gets located. Nicholas at nine under. What a finish. Norman and Kite tied at minus eight.
Never in the history of golf has a more popular champion been crowned. Jack Nicklaus, for the sixth time, has won the Masters Golf Tournament. And he did it in spectacular fashion, firing a 65 here this afternoon in the final round. But this tournament begins back on a Wednesday afternoon. And we will take you back and show you some of the sights and sounds that make the Masters at Augusta the special golf tournament that it is through the years. Jack Nicklaus back in 1963 won for the first time. A lot of people said he was over the hill, that he'd never been able to win, not only here, but any other golf tournament. But Jack Nicklaus fooled everyone here this afternoon with one of the great rounds of golf that we have ever seen. And now we want to come down inside the butler cabin, and it's my pleasure to introduce the chairman of the Masters, Horde Harden. Horde? Thank you, uh, Brent. Uh, I don't remember anything quite like this in my time, but uh, we'd like to talk to the two fellows who prevailed in this heated competition. First, Sam Randolph, it's great to have you back as, a, as our low amateur, and I hope you had a nice day. Yeah, well, thank you. It was a pleasure for me to be here this week. It was a very exciting week. Uh, what are your future plans for golf? Well, I'm going to play in the U.S. Open this summer as an amateur and uh, turn pro immediately after that and come out and play a few tournaments this summer, and I'm looking forward to that. Great. Uh, we wish you the most success. Thank you. Jack, I don't know what to say to you because this was something special. <laughs> uh, Bob Jones once said that you play a game that, with which he was not familiar, and if he were here, I'm sure he'd repeat that. A magnificent performance. Thank you, Hard. Uh, I haven't, uh, you know, it's been an unusual year for me. I really have played just awful, and uh, uh, I started playing well about a week ago, and I felt like I could play, and uh, I didn't think, to, I didn't expect to be in the position to win, but uh, I felt this morning, all of a sudden, if I shot, said if I shot 66, I thought I'd tied 65 at win, and it's exactly what happened, and. Uh, um, I don't know, but I just kept doing things right this afternoon, and I finally made, made a bunch of putts, and that was what was fun. <laughs> I haven't had this much fun in six years. <laughs> <laughs> How difficult was it to sit and watch uh, these fellas chasing you? Well, I, I, I sat and watched Kite missed, and then I sat and watched Norman miss, and I said, well, if Norman made it while I was sitting, I better stand up. So I stood up for the last one. <laughs> Jack, some, some of your feelings out on the course when the, when the crowd rose to the occasion and, and you walked up to the 16th, what were your thoughts at this moment? Well, it was so deafening, the sound and the, and the noise was so deafening, I couldn't hear anything. I mean, going from tea to green, I've never, I mean, the last time I had enthusiasm like that was at Baldashall. The people were just fantastic at Baldashall, just as they were here today, we were fantastic here. And, you know, it's, uh, I didn't really didn't even think about what kind of score I was shooting. All I just kept making was birdies. Every time I got myself in position, I just, uh, I just made the putt. And uh, where it really happened and turned around was at 15. I stood out in the fairway and I hit a big drive and uh, I turned to Jackie, and, uh, uh, who incidentally was terrific this week. He just, uh, you know, to have your son caddying for you, and uh, it was terrific. And uh, to, uh, anyway, I sat there with a, with a four iron and I turned and I says do you think the three I think three would go a long way here and I took it and aimed it right at the hole and they carried it that far from the hole and made three and of course I missed the hole in one but I guess about that far at 16 uh, and it just you know it just it just kept building up and we kept reading the darn putts right and I kept hitting them where I was looking which has been a very unusual occurrence for me lately <laughs> but it's uh, I don't it was just it was fantastic the people were fantastic and uh, uh, you know Every, all I keep reading in the papers is you just don't win the Masters at age 46. And by gosh, I think they're wrong. Jack, a whole <laughs> lot of folks gave up on you in the media. But did you ever have any doubts that you could come back and win again? Well, I said, I, I was in Atlanta last, uh, last week, matter of fact, for USJ fundraising dinner. And uh, they asked me what I was going to do. And I said, fellas, I'm going to win more golf tournaments. I'm not going to quit playing golf the way I'm playing. In other words, I felt like, uh, sure, I'm going to not play uh, as much golf in the future as, I, as I'm playing right now, but I don't want to go out of, out of the game of golf playing poorly. And there's nothing wrong with my golf game that putting my mind to playing golf won't get the job done. Uh, I've had some other things uh, in the last year that 
Uh, I've kept my mind away from golf, and frankly, I've enjoyed those things. I've had a lot of fun. There's other things to life besides playing golf, and uh, my family and uh, a lot of the things I'm doing business-wise are, are a lot of fun for me. So, but uh, when I get to playing golf, and when I get to the major tournaments, and when I get to the Masters, you know, I'm thinking golf. You know how to do one thing as well as any competitor I've ever been around. When you get a chance to close and win, you snap that door shut. And now, here I think is the shot you told us about on the 15th. 15th, this is the putt. You weren't that was, excited. That was, a, that was a good putt. Jackie and I said, we're reading it. We hit, played about six inches of break there. And I'd, I'd missed that putt. If it was a little different position, but I'd missed that putt in 75 for Eagle when, I, when Miller and Weisskopf and I were coming down the final. And I'd hit it a little bit too easy, and I hadn't kept enough speed on it and lost it. Great hug from your son there. Oh, uh, I mean, and going around today, I don't know, I, I kept trying to keep, I kept getting tears in my eyes, walking up the fairways from the reaction I kept getting from the people, and I kept saying, hey, you've got golf to play. You know, get back playing golf. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you just one question, Jack. You uh, have won 20 majors now. Is this the most gratifying? Or they all are. But this one's certainly at age 46, and... Uh, as many people have said, in December of my career, <laughs> it's well, got to be as big as any of them, that's for sure. And, you know, this, to win the Masters Tournament hard, uh, you know, people don't realize that the way you set up this golf tournament, the way you set up the golf course, the way you have the pin placements, the way you have the speeds of the green, it's really, frankly, is a young man's tournament because you really have to have super nerves to be able to putt the greens. They are very, very difficult. And... Uh, it's, it's, it's a matter of not only playing good golf, but being able to compose yourself, and I was able to do that this week. Great. Uh, it's time for us to put the jacket on you okay. again for the sixth time. Bernard? Jack, I want to congratulate you. Thanks, it was Barry. fantastic. Appreciate Unbelievable. It. Your 20th. It's a pleasure for me to put it on. You're a great champion. Thank you. I appreciate that, Bernard. Congratulations, Jack. Thank you, Hurd. Thank you. One of the great moments in sports, Jack Nicklaus, oh. now wearing the green for the sixth time, getting that hug out on the 15th green from his son, Jackie. Jack Nicklaus has done it. He has won the Masters again.